They went on from there and they passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples and saying to them that the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they'd argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. And then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. May God add his blessing to this, the hearing of his word. Let all of God's people say amen. Amen. I want to lift up very briefly before I continue on a piece of this scripture in the NRSV which I read just now about the child. It's very different than the way we look at children in our culture today. If you were listening you would have heard me say and then he that is Jesus took a little child and put it among them, taking it in his arms. That was the status of a child in the day of Jesus. It. They had a status that was almost lower than anything than even a slave. There was no recognition of children in the day. So this is why it was so significant that Jesus would take a child in front of his disciples and say, it, and grab that child in his arms. It's a radical change, the gospel of Christ, a radical change from the culture of Jesus' day, a radical change from the culture of even our day. We sometimes want to meld the two together, but we cannot, and be serious and truthful to the gospel. Sermon title today is Creeping Charlie. Ever heard of that before? Growing up, I'm, you know, ground stuff, ground char. I don't know what. It, it's sort of a ground ivy and stuff, and that's the picture on the bulletin. I love that picture. It thrives in moisture, and it thrives in the shade and the shadow places. That's where it thrives. The only way to control it from our yards or out in the timber is to cut away the trees, cut away the bushes, and to expose it. Expose it to the sun. It's about the only way to control it. It's toxic. And we are toxic when we are not paying attention to our call in Christ Jesus. Our first hymn today... They will know us how, by our love, how we care for each other, not only within the community of the church that we are parts of, but also with the community at large. They will know us by how we love one another. And if we don't do that, they will also know that we may or may not be exactly who we say we are or claim to be. Ground ivy thrives in the shadows. It thrives in the, in the dampness, in the, in the darkness. We are to confront that darkness. Prior to our gospel reading from this morning, Jesus talks about the feeding of the 5,000. The Pharisees want signs. There's a healing of a blind man. Jesus predicts his death. We also have the transfiguration which precedes this not too far. And then the child. 
In all of this, previous two chapters to our reading for the day, Jesus is very troubled by their lack of faith, their lack of faith from the disciples themselves. They're not listening to Him. They're really not. And the question I think every day is for us to be asking ourselves, are we truly listening to the teaching? Are we truly loving one another as Jesus might expect us and want us to love one another? Over the years in the church, I have caught myself and I've observed a, a mindset of scarcity. You know, we just don't have enough, Pastor. We need to wait. Not enough. We have to wait until there's enough. We have to keep things in reserve. You know, it, it's like those special plates that you have at home. Anybody have those? No, don't show hands. I don't want to, I don't want to know. <laughs> but those special plates that only come out on special occasions. In the meantime, they're collecting so much dust, it's ridiculous on some places. But they're there for those special dinners. But how often do those special dinners actually take place? Christmas, Thanksgiving, maybe? We've got to wait till everybody is gathered together before we break out the special plates. And exactly when is that going to happen? That special time. As human beings, we have a tendency to wait. Often, sitting back and waiting for just the right time when the right time often passes us by. It passes us by. We get, we get caught up, we get hung up in wanting to be the special ones. That's what the disciples are doing. They're not listening to Jesus. They're starting to fall backwards and go, who's going to be the most popular? Who's going to be number one? Who's going to rise to the, to the surface? And we see it all around us. But we sometimes don't even recognize it. The humorist Dave Barry a number of years ago wrote a book called Hits Below the Beltway. And he said when you go to Washington DC you will find a whole category of, of hierarchies that are, that are built into the system. Washingtonians he said know a person's position by their title. And these are some of the titles. Actual federal titles. Principal Assistant Deputy Undersecretary is more or less, according to Barry, less important than the Associate Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary or the Principal Deputy to the Deputy Assistant Secretary or the Principal Assistant Deputy Undersecretary. You catch my drift. These are actual names of people. And they're categorized. And everybody, I guess, in, according to Barry, in Washington, D.C., would know where they fall in positions of authority. I don't know what we're doing sometimes as human beings. We get so hung up on these kinds of things. The truth is, we ought to be more involved with each other in our relationships with each other, getting to know each other, not our titles, but who we are as human beings, as people. I'm somewhat tired, and I, I, I'm, I would suspect you guys are as well, of, of this fake news stuff that we keep on hearing. Even the fake news title itself bothers me. Even though I'm not even sure what it even means anymore. We need to dig deeper into whatever the truth may or may not be. And the truth is, as I said, represented by these simple candles on our table up here to focus on. And that is to focus on Jesus and what he seeks to teach to us. Love one another and to be in relationship with each other. But we tend not to do that. 
just as the disciples were arguing about who was the greatest and Jesus knew it, how often do we do the very same thing today? We argue and debate with each other about what the best way to proceed is, and we don't listen to the other. We take our position, refusing to listen, even for a moment in time, to their position, whoever they are, and find a place in that in-between where perhaps together we might move forward and not separate. Where together we might find unity in our diversity. It is a bold approach, but it is an approach that was introduced to us a long time ago in Christ Jesus. Do we honestly think that the disciples agreed with each other on all things? No. They disagreed on many matters, many ideas. One of the characters of, of comics, one of the characters of cartoons that I recall coming across long ago, and I've got a, a saying in my office occasionally that I think of. I haven't placed it yet. But do you remember the character Pogo in the comic books? We have met the enemy, and he is us. We have met the enemy, and he is us. All we have to do is look in the mirror sometimes, and we recognize the enemy. It's right in front of us. The refusal to be cooperative, the refusal to listen to the other people who we need to listen to, who have a different way of looking at things. And this, my sisters and brothers, is a shift, a paradigm shift of listening. Even perhaps when we don't want to listen. There are at least three things, if not more, that we must do as human beings, in my opinion. Particularly those who seek to follow Christ. First and foremost, take time to process what we're working with. We're inundated with, with the internet and with Twitters and all the other kinds of things like this. And this is often bites into our reptilian mindset. It is, let's just react right now, right now, right now. And it's also tearing us apart. We need to be teachable. Meaning we need to be listening and willing to listen to those who do not see as gently as we see. And be willing to talk by the Master Himself, by Christ. with Christ. In our world there are many trolls, if you will, out there trying to engage us and grab us. And one of my favorite sayings, again another one is, don't wrestle with pigs. You only end up getting dirty and the pigs enjoy it. <laughs> but how often do we seek to wrestle with a pig? doesn't ever turn out well for anyone except perhaps the pig who enjoys it. The teacher of James in the New Testament says that we are to rise with wisdom, to be peaceable, to be gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, full of good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. Remember that Jesus put it on his lap in front of his disciples. A child. I want to take you back for a moment to something that you sometimes read through and may not always pay attention to or at least forget about after we do it. Our call to worship. Turn back if you would. The second piece, after one it says all, their delight is in the law of the Lord 
On in his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water. For David, the teacher and the writer of the Psalms, the writer of this particular Psalm, he's referring to the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives, God in our lives, to gain the strength of the wisdom. And the wisdom is this, that Jesus didn't die on the cross so we could be happy. We can also say that a believer is not to be unhappy. But the psalmist in this particular reading is making clear that being by the stream of water, being by the stream and being with the Spirit, this is what brings us and ought to be bringing us happiness. There's a lot of fake news and scam artists and there's a lot of creeping Charlies out there living in the darkness and the shadows. It is for us to bring about a new vision, a new light. But it's not new, is it? It's Christ. It's going to look new, perhaps. It's always changing, always transforming our world. A willingness to change. A willingness to shift from what was to what can be, to what will be. Are we willing to work with God and the Holy Spirit? Are we able to work with God and the Holy Spirit? Amen.